our students and beginning artists. Brian Proctor, the art teacher, and I am back. I am an art teacher, as I said, and a comic book artist. Now, you might say, why comic books? Well, to me, because comic books is the ultimate art form. Unlike other art forms uh, where you're sitting and you're drawing one thing all day, you're drawing cats or flowers or trees or something, you're doing that all day. Comic books, you're drawing everything. Not only are you drawing the cats and the trees and the dogs, you're drawing peoples and expressions and clothes designs and cars and buildings and interior designs. You are doing everything. And that's why I love comics so much. And that's why I teach people how to draw. Now, you might not want to draw comics, but I teach you how to draw nonetheless. And when I'm finished, you'll be able to draw almost everything. Now, lately, I have been talking to a few people that have said that they were beginning artists and they didn't know where to start. So this video was made just for those beginner artists to show them where to start. Now this stuff, in an hour, I plan on showing you what they didn't show you, your art teachers didn't show you for years. So once you walk away from this, you will have a great knowledge of drawing. Now this is gonna be an hour video, it's kind of long, but guarantee you, you will walk away with the knowledge to draw. So let's jump into the video and get started. Get your pencils and papers together and let's get ready to learn something for you beginners. They didn't teach you this in school. All right, let's go. All right, so welcome to class. Welcome to the first day of learning how to draw. The first day of the rest of your life of learning how to draw. All right, what I have here are the three basic shapes you will need for the rest of your life. You have your square, your circle, and your triangle. All these shapes are overlooked, except for the circle. But when we walk through life, we see these shapes all the time, every day, hundreds of times a day, but we don't really pay attention to them. So we have the cousins of the square, which is the rectangle. And all that is, is just a square with my pencil. And you just chop a little piece off of the square right there. And then you have your rectangle, regardless of how fat or wide or long, it's still a rectangle. And then you have your circle. Now, when you take your circle and you tilt it, it automatically becomes an oval, which is the cousin of the circle. So if I have this circle here, which is my, what is this, my Body Fortress uh, protein shake drink, and you look at it straightforward, you have your circle, but once you tilt it, that becomes, the more you tilt it, it becomes an oval. The more, the more you tilt it, it becomes an oval. That's better with the light, it becomes that oval. So that's all it is. It's just a circle tilted with an oval. Now, this also becomes a cylinder, but we'll get into that later. I, I was going to use this, but uh, since it's round, the rectangle, but since it's got roundness to it, it's still considered the circle in the circle family. And then we have the poor triangle all alone. How much stuff is made out of a triangle? And you might, might be surprised. You might be surprised. You look around and you say, I don't see any triangles, but yeah, you might be surprised. All right, so let's jump a little deeper into some of these shapes. The square. Look around your room. See how many things are actually square. Your TV, flat screen, if you're lucky enough to have a flat screen, your dresser, even your remote, your phone, chair, window, refrigerator, with ice maker. And then you have the hard part about the square is when you tilt the square, it becomes a box. So now that's the hardest thing for people to do is to create that three-dimensional box. That's something you're gonna have to practice and practice and practice to get it because every square is gonna turn into this particular little box. It might not be fat. Let's just take this eraser, my brand new eraser. Here we have this flat, zoom in, square, which would be a rectangle. So the second you tilt it, you start to see the other sides of it. Let's get the fresh side, yeah. And that's just something you're gonna to have to do. So when you walk into a room and you look at your dresser or your bed or your whatever, uh, you, know, it, you, you, you most likely you don't see it straight on unless you're looking out of a window, but when you walk away from the window, you're gonna see the side. So that three-dimensional shape from the square is gonna be the hardest one in that particular family. But take a look around right now, look at what you're, what you're doing. You're looking at your monitor, which is more likely square or rectangle, your table, your chair you're sitting in, the walls, the door, Basically, everything we use is square. We have a square house, so we also, so 
That's the reason why we have square furniture. It's easier to fit a square in a square than Tetris. You know, you can't fit a bunch of triangles into a square room. And that could be one reason we kind of got rid of the triangle because it's, it's really hard to fill up a room with a triangle shape with furniture. So that's one reason why we use the square. But look around, keep looking around and say, oh, there's a square, there's a square, there's a square. I didn't know. My uh, printer, uh, all my shelves, my, my, what is that thing? It's my cabinets, my drawers, all of these things. Drawers, I draw drawers. Okay, so let's go into the circle. Circle is simple. I mean, we see that. I mean, without, without you know, even looking at it, we see the circle. You know, as I said, once you tilt it, it becomes that oval. And then if you stretch it out, it will become a cylinder, which we'll get into more. So, you know, of course, you have your tires, your wheels. These are good Goodyear, these are the Goodyear Eagle GTs. These are expensive tires right there. A DVD, because you're like, what is that? So I had to mark it. That's a DVD. Any kind of ball you see is going to be round. Dinner plates, drum set. I don't play drums, so don't get on me about the drum set. The cap on any bottle is going to be round. Uh, your toilet paper or paper towel roll, round. But once we tilt anything, it's going to become that cylinder, regardless of how big. So if, let's just say this was the tire and I tilted it, it's going to be about like that. It's going to be round like that. Still, it's going to be a cylinder, no matter how long, how long. Even the pencils, the pencils that we use are more cylinders. The ink pens, any mop handle or broom handle or, or rake or shovel, all of that is cylinders. So once you see these basic shapes and you master these basic shapes, it is so, so, so simple to draw. But people will stress out over the little things. Let's just say, if I say, okay, here's a comb. I want you to draw this comb. First thing you probably do is look at all the teeth and say, oh, that's going to be so hard to do. But if you look at it in its basic shape, look at the basic shape, it becomes simple. And that's what you have to do when you want to become a great artist, not see something that is so, and I'm looking for something, something that is so hard to draw like this here. I show you that. Oh, I can't never draw a car. I'll never be able to draw a car. But if you look at it, what shape is that? That's a rectangle. You have another rectangle on top of this. You have a couple rectangles here with just a little bit of curves. So that is so simple. And then again here, you have a rectangle here. It might be slanted a little bit and you have another rectangle on top. Slanted a little bit as well. Just a couple circles. It is so simple to draw. Once you start looking at the basis of everything and stop trying to, oh, too much detail. Don't look at the detail until the very end. You get the shape right. You get every line down. Everything else will fall in place. And no, I don't have a BMW. I have a Cadillac. All right, put that up. So, circle, and let's move on to the poor, old, lonely, crying triangle. What is a triangle? You might be surprised how much stuff that we turn a triangle into or the triangle turn into. Okay, just some basic stuff for now. Triangle. Your rooftop. Now, the triangle is usually chopped up. I had to put it there to remind myself. It's usually chopped up or molded, but it's still a triangle. As I say, every rooftop is basically trapped. Not everyone, but you know, the standard rooftop is a triangle. Your lamp shade. A lamp shade is just basically that triangle that they chopped it off. And then even the base. A lot of times we use our bases. Our bases are basically triangles because you have so much weight down here, so much room for weight down here that we can put a pole or something into it to hold. Uh, even stairs. Stairs are basically made out of a triangle. If you do a second one, that's a triangle. We just, as I said, we take the triangle, we just kind of chop it up and mold it a little bit. Your wine glass for your favorite martini. It's shaken, not stirred. The funnel. Triangle. An arrowhead. Even old spearheads are triangles. So you see there is a use for the triangle. And then the biggest one that we never really think about for the triangle, we have, and I have to have my notes here, the triangle is not what we make into it, but, what, but it is what we make from it. So let me show you now. Now comes the drawing part. We're going to get straight into some good deep stuff to show you just how easy it is as soon as I raise my chair back up, which likes to drop down for some strange reason. 
All right, the triangle. Let's do a triangle real quick. Here's this big triangle, okay? Big triangle. You see a triangle. I see so many other drawings. Now, watch this. So if I do this, 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 and that's just a center line broken. I have a road. Don't believe me? Here we have another line right here. And let's do some squares, rectangles. Okay, Brian, do some rectangles. That's, that's weird. I'm in a rush, so there you go. So now, what do you have? You have a road leading into the city, the dark city, from a triangle. As I say, it's not so much what we make the triangle into, it's what we get from making the triangle. Get from what? But what we make from it. I had to write that down because that's something that popped into my head. So I had to, it's what we make from it. Simple triangle. Now you have a road that also shows you perspective. Show you something else real quick. I mean, anybody can draw that. I mean, you can just take your ruler and just draw some squares and, you know, here's a, here's a square car. As I say, the hard part is, and here's another triangle right there. There's a triangle right there. Chop that off. Put a rectangle here. Put a small triangle rectangle here. And chop that off there. Put some, where is it? This is, this is the window. This is the other window. This is the hood. This is the light, tail lights right here. And you probably wouldn't see any tires there. And then you have a car on your long stretch of road. Now, I'm kind of getting a little more into it, but if you look at these shapes, they're just squares, rectangles. And here's my tail lights, turn that into a Mustang. My name plate. And as I said, you wouldn't see no wheels. Maybe some wheels out here. It depends on if they're rolling on those fat Eagle GTs, video Eagle GTs, and then he's got the windows tinted. And yeah, I don't think you would see too much of the, the front thing. And you got the smoke coming out of the car. And you have a car driving into town from a triangle, actually two triangles. Now let's look at this. Let's let's get into some some meaty stuff, but it's it's very simple to draw. Very simple to draw. Do the triangle again. Let's just say, here's the point of my triangle. Okay, this is where I want my triangle to stop, right there. Boom, triangle, right there. Okay? Now let's just say I did another triangle, upside down. If you can't do an upside down, flip that paper, flip that paper. And we'll try to get it the same size. If you can't get it the same size, uh, don't worry about it, I'll show you a trick. So now you have two triangles right there. If you look on the side and you drew a line down here, you'd have another triangle. That's three triangles. If you did another line down here, you have four triangles. Okay, let me simplify that. If you want to draw this, why would I want to draw this? I'll show you. Draw a square. Draw an X point. A point now you have four triangles and what I'm gonna do with four triangles what you're gonna do you're gonna put another square into this point 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 you're gonna put another square right here right here right there right there that's a square I'm gonna draw this again a little bigger I know why I started drawing it slow erase that what kind of eraser are you using Brian Erase that. You now have a room, a long hallway room. That's a pet peeve. That, when it does that, that's a pet peeve of mine. I don't know why, because my tilt, here it comes again. <laughs> because my table is tilted, I cannot tilt it anymore. Everything will slide down. Now, same thing, I'll do this on this big piece right here. You're just drawing a square from line to line to line. Now you just have, because this is so narrow, that would be, and I'm not going to use that eraser again. I'll use this one. 
you've just drawn you a hallway because it's so because it, the rooms are so narrow or this box is so narrow that's a hallway how's that a hallway Brian because I can put a door right here which is a square are you focused don't do me like that and then put the doorknob right there which is a circle let's just say I'll put something right here with a window here's a triangle let's do another triangle going to this point here triangle triangle going to that original triangle point and then I'll just do a line just like that erase these lines here now I have like let's just say since that's a hallway let's say this is a doctor's office Dr. John's office you know when you go you go to a dentist's office you can get your teeth pulled you got to go down that long hallway this could be a picture frame with Dr. John holding up some teeth that he pulled out of somebody's mouth. There you go. So now you have a hallway leading to a door with uh, some cruel dental um, equipment in it. Let's put a little frame around here, the doorknob. And then you can have lights, which, is, which would be a triangle too. But I'm just kind of skipping ahead. Those overhead, what do you call those, uh, fluorescent lights. And then maybe there's another office right here. So triangle, triangle. Let's use this line here and this line here. i put it up a little higher to make this triangle. And then straight down, straight down. Here is somebody else's office. Right there. That's the orthodontist. And right now, I don't know what an orthodontist is. It's something to do with the mouth. So you've just drawn a hallway. And let me ink that so we can get some of these extra lines out the way. You've just drawn a picture so quickly. This is stuff that, as I said earlier, that you will learn in just, just one quick lesson that it took your art teachers years to try to teach you how to do. He's got a tie on because he's a he's a doctor, dentist with his big glasses on because he needs to see. He needs to see you. He needs to see your teeth. Okay, so here's my back wall. We just started and this is the triangle. This was the hardest, basically the hardest uh, unused shape. I'm not gonna say the hardest unused shape. This Dr. Feelgood, Dr. Feelgood. Okay. And there's my other door right here. Some detail on that. Put that little frame around the door. Frame here. And then here's this doorknob, the little metal frame that they put around there. And this is Dr. Smith, orthodontist. Yeah, so now you just drew a, a nice little picture for someone who said they cannot draw, or maybe you didn't say you couldn't draw, maybe you just said you wanted to draw and didn't know how to draw. After this video, you will definitely know how to draw. Give a little bit of meat to that, and that's what I'm saying about a square. Once you turn it, turn it, tilt it a little bit, you're going to see that three-dimensional thing and maybe he has like a walkway or something and then you can do the checkerboard pattern so the sky's the limit when it comes to drawing anything and it's just seeing the shapes that you need to draw something all right so let's 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 hit another one of these because it's fun to do so start out with your square. Since that one was so so rectangle, let's open one up. Just get one open up. Maybe we'll do, just do two. Let's say about right there. Now, <clears throat> the first thing you have to do is figure where do you want your point for your triangle. Let's just say instead of putting it in the middle, like we did here, let's put it down over to the side more. So let's just say, let's put it down lower and here, right here. That's going to be the point of my triangle. So this is the bottom of my triangle. So I'm going to draw my triangle here. 
and all the way over to here. Remember, that's the bottom of my triangle. So we have that. So this triangle is kind of like tilted at a crazy angle. So remember, we want to do the other triangle over here. Align to that point. So all these lines are going to go to that point. Align to this point right here. Now, if you're an artist, you're seeing this already. So now I want to frame this out. This, these are my walls, actually. These are my walls. So now I want to put a line, right, a square right here, or a line here, and that's just an L. That's just a letter L. That's something else I try to teach, drawing and shapes. Over here and straight down here. Now that's a little bit high, but that's okay because my lines are a little crooked. Now let's get rid of this point and these extra lines. Now what we have is another hallway. If you play Star Wars or something like that, you know how the ships shoot, come shooting out of the little thing, yeah. But this is a long hallway. This could be any kind of hallway that you want it to be. But by just shifting that triangle over or that triangle point. So anytime you do a triangle, you want to know where that top point goes. That's, that would be the main secret. Where does that top point go in that square? And in your drawing rooms, you're already drawing rooms. So we shifted that one over. Now let's just say I wanted this to be a little longer, make it look like a little longer, you know, and I could draw a big door or a small door that, that would tell you the size of the room. So let's just say I'll do this. Let's go here and put another square here. Where these touch, where these points touch, then you have to line them up. I'll put another one right here, right here, straight across here, and then down here. I'll do another one. And this gives you an indication of being really, really long, depending on how far I put these lines, and I'll put one more here, here, here. And here now that could be anything that could be like the fighter bay you know the jets are coming in and the jets are going out it could be just a long hallway where you can put you know a door here a door here remember anytime you do a line a, a, kind of like that triangle line you're gonna have to go to that point so let's just do this let's say this is a door this is a door this is a door we have a door here so this could be one of the, like a maze game or something or some kind of horror thing where you know, the, the monsters are in there. It could be jail cells in the hallway. And you put your bars here. These could be the inmates or the, 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 the monsters that are, are locked away, the, the zombies that are locked away in the thing. Zombie number nine. Zombie number eight. Zombie number 21. Why did it go out of order? Because it's my picture. And then you can have the same thing here. From that point, you're drawing that. Because you already have your bottom triangle. Especially with doors. If it's a door and you want to draw a triangle, you already have this bottom triangle. You don't go way down here. You use this one, that line, that already existing line, these two existing lines, and then you just put your top line there. Same thing here. These doors could be, but they would be really thin that you couldn't really see. But once you become a better artist, you'll be able to do it. So let's do one more just because. So I'll say... The size of my room. And this is a square. We're going back to the square now. Squares are so simple to draw. If you draw crooked squares, use your triangle, which I, I'll get in a minute, or a ruler. It's better to have a triangle. My busted ruler. This is a rolling ruler. It just has this wheel on the bottom. So if I draw a line here, I don't have to take it up, and I could just roll it across. I draw a line here. I just roll it on the wheel, and then the the, the line will be. It'll still be that straightness instead of line here and then I pick it up and I try to get that line straight and I do it and it's crooked so this is all this is it's like a rolling ruler I had it for so long it just I'm too cheap to buy another one same thing here since I got it let me just go ahead and show you again straight roll it down and you have that straight line again which is not straight because I didn't lay it on the paper straight all right so again so let's just say I put my point of my triangle well, since I put it over here, let's put it over here. I put it way up here. That's my point of my triangle. So I'm going to do a triangle here and here. Long triangle. I'm going to need this. So I'm going to make another triangle from this corner. So this, this is one triangle. 
this corner here to this point is going to be another triangle and then from this corner there is going to be another triangle so if you're an artist you can see it again now i'll do my door on my back wall which is just a square point to point point to point and point to point take care of that now i have another hallway long hallway Except this one, this one is kind of like eye level. You can almost say it's going down. This one is going up. So if you had a camera, if you had like the security camera right up here somewhere, this is the view you would get from the security camera. There was another one right here. This is the lens of the camera. This is the kind of like the view that you would get from this hallway for being up. So by placing that point anywhere around that room, anywhere in that square, to make your triangle, it determines where your back wall is and it determines the angle that you will have when you try to draw something. So let's just, let's put it just right here. Put that point right here and we'll do that again real quick and I'll show you another thing. And it's best to use ruler. Now, suppose I don't want a hallway like that. Maybe I don't want a long jail cell or a fighter, fighter bay that you know the fighters are coming down so long. Then you just make that doorway or that square at that triangle a lot bigger. Puts you closer to that wall or that door or whatever it is that you want right there. And of course they should have been on that line but this is a rush job. So then you have just enough just like the office except it wouldn't be so narrow like that it would be more square and you can have a rectangle long rectangle high whatever whatever shape as long as you have those triangles right then you can have that could be just like a back wall that could be the prison cell it could be the prison cell for the person and he's got like a nice little picture window up there and he's got his little bed here and we'll get into we'll get into all the other stuff later got his little prisoner bed and has a little sink right here. And all these rectangles that I'm drawing are mainly triangles that go back to that point, but I'm just doing a quick, quick, um, quick drawing for you guys. And then he's got his little scratch marks, how many days he's been locked up, he's a prisoner. And then of course you have the, what is there in the movies, you have the little food slot and I don't think he has a doorknob or anything on that side. I think it just opens from the outside. And maybe he's got your, his one little light, one little overhead light right there. So from using the triangle, as I say, it's not what we make into the triangle, it's what we make from the triangle. And that's just one thing. So I don't want to spend a lot of time on doing the triangle. All right, so that's just some perspective tricks you do using a triangle making it easy because perspective is very hard for a lot of people to do but now that i've broken it down it should be pretty much easy to do all right now what are we going on to now we did the triangle let's go back to the square the square and as i said the hardest part of the square is just being able to make it three-dimensional Taking that and then adding a top or a side or a bottom, let's go to the bottom. So what you want to do, and this is hard for some people to see, and I haven't figured out how they see because I can see it, but I haven't really figured out how they see it and that they can't really get it. But it's just you take three lines and you're going at the same angle. I don't want to use a ruler right now. You're going at the same angle like that. And then you're doing the letter L. One, two, that's all it is, the letter L. We write every day, we write every day, but we don't see that drawing is the same as writing. You can take that L, turn it over here, make the letter L, you have a perfect box. Um, I would say the letter E, but it's, it's not really, but we'll go from there. That's it. I have other videos on drawing with, with letters. So doing that, and that's from the bottom. If you wanted to turn it, you can turn this any way on your paper and have it in any direction that you want. 
you know, and I know you're like, okay, that's, that's like getting over. I want to learn how to do it myself. So again, there's one, I'll do two. It's just, let's just say this is the bottom of my box here. You want one that's going to be on top, then you take your lines from the top. It's either going to be left or right. Same angle. You cannot have, now this is the part that I get that some people can't see. Some people will do those two lines there, and then they'll have the other one down here like this. And then they try to connect it, and it, it doesn't. It, it's not working because this line, they have to go at that same direction. If you have to get a ruler, use another pencil or something. Take your first line. Let's do something. Let's just make it easy. Take your first line. Do this right here with your pencil. Keep that pencil. Slide it down. Take that pencil. Slide it down. Don't you don't let go with your fingers. Don't kind of like start it and then just do wobble it like that. It has to stay on the same. If you can hold like this, and it just slide it. Don't pick it up. Move it around or point it. Just do that. Do that and, and just push it. And then you'll get really close to doing that box that you wanted to do. Same thing here. So we went down. So let's go up. Uh, let's go. Well, let's go down. Let's go down. You're, you're seeing the bottom again, which is that, which is the opposite of that. So an easy one is just taking if the box is flat, flat on the ground. If the box is flat and you just take that line out like this, not too far, and then down. So basically that's just chain pencils. That's just a rectangle with a line like that. And then if you darken the side, that could be your box tilted to the side. But you don't want it to be too long. So that's just this box here and this white and you just kind of tilt it to the side a little bit and you're seeing the side of it. Let's get the clean side and you tilt it, put it in the black. Maybe that'll be easier to see. Maybe not. You're just tilting it to the side and you're seeing it and that's all it is. You don't want it too, too, too tilted. I mean, if I had something square that had color, it'd be a, lot, a little easier to see. Now, if you're trying to do perspective in it, on it, then you would draw your triangle again. If you have to turn it up to the top, center that, draw your triangle. That's like drawing a house. I think everybody knows how to draw a house. You know, when, when we first started to draw, when first learned to draw, we draw the house. Turn it back over and then chop it off just like that. Then you have a box that's going back in perspective, which is also a building. We want to draw buildings. We draw this. We draw this here. And maybe another one here behind one of the buildings. So these are this is my this is New York, okay? So what I'm going to do, this is my ground for my buildings. Let's just do this. Put some windows in these buildings. Just to show that they are occupied. And there's been a couple long windows because this is further back. And there's a couple windows here, a couple windows here, a couple windows here. So what you want to do is, again, center, triangle. Now they all have to go to one point now. So this line, the center line, all of these triangles are going to have to go there. So this one can go this direction. That one can go there, that one can go here. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna chop it off again. Here's my buildings, chop it off here, chop it off here, and chop it off here. So what I have is my rectangle and my chopped off triangle. all pointing to this line, the center line for this first one. You already know how to draw a rectangle or try, uh, square. Well, we're working on that now. And then you have your building. So if I did like some roads coming out 
like between the buildings and they connected here and there's a road coming out here and they, they go in front of that building there's a parking lot or parking structure or whatever some roads going then i can have my eh, this wouldn't go right there i could have my lines here's my cars So I just did a little makeshift little city there. Little city, little cityscape, city street, city something. And that's just by drawing a box and center line and then draw my triangle on top of the box, which is like drawing a house. And if you have to turn your paper over, center line. Then you turn your paper back over the way you want to and chop off how much you, whatever you need. If it's a long, long, um, long siding, a long, like a warehouse or something, you have it long. If it's short, shorten it. We'll just keep that one since it's long. And then you can turn your paper back over and you have what you want. So if I turn it back over, this is the top. What this reminds me of is like railroad um, cars, the, the big containers, or it could be the back of a truck. And if you want to be a potential artist, now that you can see shapes, look at how stuff is constructed, like a truck, back of a truck, if I'm not mistaken. And, it had, and you know, I work unloading freight and stuff like that, so I've seen enough back of trucks. You know, see how that stuff looks. And then, I know somebody's like, no, there's no thing down here. <laughs> it makes drawing easier. This is the back of your, your, your truck, your truck. The back of your truck is your semi. I know it has that little thing that goes back and it goes up. And of course your hinges are going to be there. If I'm not mistaken, I don't think your hinges are the inside. Or are they? I think your hinges might be on the inside. Anyway, and I believe there's maybe some lights up here. Brake lights up here and maybe some down there. Start looking at how stuff is constructed when you want to learn how to draw. And it makes it a lot easier so you don't have to continue to run um, and try to find stuff. So if that was a container, it would be sitting on the back of a truck, flatbed. Don't ask me to draw a flatbed. And I don't, I don't know. It's got the wheels here somehow, some way. I don't know if you see the, the um, under the bottom, the little thing under the bottom. I can't think of what that's called. Anyway, I'm getting into deep drawing. This is your first time drawing. I'm showing you the easy stuff, but I'm also showing you what you can do once you learn the easy stuff. So square, you've got your bottom. You can make this as as, as, as you want, as long as you want. So because you're seeing the bottom, you're kind of like looking up at this building. If you wanted to look like up at a tall building, that's your triangle again. Doing your triangle like that. And then you're coming back down with your triangle again. But since this is so high up, all you have to do is just go up a little bit and you come like that. And then you're looking at your tall buildings. And if I kept going, you see the triangle. And you're going down again. And you're looking at your tall buildings. I would do the landscape thing, but no, I'm not going to do that. So, but you'll never see the ground. If you're like that, you'll never see the ground that your feet are standing on. So you'd have to chop it off somewhere right there so it's, it's like the point is here and you're going around with your points so your other buildings would be here over here with those points but again that's going too much was i drawing off i'm sorry i have i have a my camera's not set exactly right where i because i sit over here so let me pull my camera over so this will not happen again that's better I tend to just, I don't know why, I pull it over that way. So square, square, square. Now comes the hard part. Square is pretty much easy once you learn how to draw these things. Remember, hold your pencil or your other, get another pencil and a pen and just drag it across as you draw the lines. If you have to flip it over, if you can only do one way by hand, then flip it over, do it, and then turn it back, and then you have the way that you want. Triangle plays a big part on that because this is this would be it's not really a triangle, but it goes back toward the triangle. But because this is not so shallow, it's gonna go way, way off my paper here. 
before you reach that point of the triangle. And what were they saying? Circle, circle. We all know the circle, but the hard part for the circle is turning it into that cylinder, cylinder. Now an oval is pretty easy. Now oval determines how much uh, that, sub that circle is turned. That's your complete circle. That starts to become an oval, but it's not as much as, as this. But the more you turn it, the more of an oval you have. So let me use this. This is an old paper towel roll of mine. Okay, so this is my circle. It's kind of beat up, but this is my circle. And if I turn more, oh, it turns into a, more of an oval. It's beat up. I mean, it's beat up. That's more better. So depending on how much you turn it, it becomes more of a deeper oval. Now, if I drew this rectangle, this is this without seeing the top or the bottom. The only way you would know it's round is if I try to kind of like show some, some shading, do some shading on it to give it that roundness look. Then you say, oh, that's probably round. And then that's the only way you would do that. But once you start to turn it over, you'll see that it is a cylinder or starting to become a cylinder. Now, what a lot of people have trouble with is they'll get the top right, but then they'll flatten off the bottom. You, this, and I'm trying to figure out how to say this. The roundness of the top must match the roundness of the bottom or the whole thing is really screwed up. And that's where a lot of people have problems at, getting the bottom just as round as the top. Because if I had a drinking glass, if you do a glass of water, it's not going to be like that. Even if it's sitting on the table, it's not going to be like that. It's going to be round. So if I put water in it, the water's not going to be flat like that either. The water has to be just as round as that top and that bottom. So if I put water or some kind of liquid in it, it's got to be like that. Now, once you master these shapes, or the cousins of these shapes, then you're ready to draw. You already started drawing when you started drawing houses and apartments and, 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 and interiors. That's something, you know, a lot of uh, seasoned drawers are drawing right now. Seasoned artists are drawing right now, and you're drawing this in the beginning. Once you learn to draw that, then you can put more stuff together. Just Let's just say the body let's let's jump into the body because i'm in the comics I, I said that in the beginning if you look at the body let's just do one whole whole body here this is my dark shadow body let's just say this is somebody standing in the shadows and this is his silhouette Now, if you broke that down to its basic pieces, you're going to have this oval. Let me draw a little smaller. This big oval, a little cylinder. A little cylinder it is a cylinder, but it's just flat. A triangle, more of the, the what I call the upside down house. You have a circle here, a circle here. A cylinder here, a circle here, a cylinder here, and an oval there. Same thing on the other side. You see what I'm doing now? A cylinder, circle, cylinder, and oval. Same thing right here. You have this cylinder, cylinder, circle, cylinder, and you would have half a triangle right there. So it's going to be behind the glass. It's a big glass cylinder. And the other half of that triangle. 
So drawing feet are just basically like two halves of a triangle. If you take a triangle, if you take a triangle and you cut that triangle in half and you split them apart, you'd have this and you'd have this. Two, two halves of a triangle. If you take a cylinder and you put on top of those two triangles, you would have some legs and feet. You'd have the lower legs, then you have the, the knee, and you have the upper legs when you join them together. And so the, you have basically your stick man. But the good thing is about once you draw anatomy, and 90% of people are going to put clothes on it, you don't have to draw the muscles and so forth. If, if, I, if I did this, and I'm going to... Put clothes on them. These are the pants, and then put some some kind of shoes on it. And this is what I'm saying about um, see how stuff works. See how stuff stuff things are designed. And once you commit that to memory, then you'll be able to really draw stuff a lot better. So what you have now is not that little stick triangle figure. You actually have somebody's legs and sh feet in tennis shoes. And it's really, really simple to do this stuff. It is really simple to do it. It's just basically once you get these things down, memorized, and then learn how to do the cousins, the cylinders, the ovals, and we'll more about this guy. We already, we already covered that guy then drawing becomes pretty simple. So if I connected this guy with just his just cylinders, oh, I forgot about the neck. And the neck is just basically just a little square. These are just this, these little simple shapes. Get a bigger pen. That you use when you draw. Maybe not that big a pen, but I got it now. People or anatomy. And the female is the same thing, and I'm, I'm going, getting way ahead. The female is the same thing, except what I use is basically two triangles. I use a triangle here. That's an upside down triangle, just, just for the sake of it. And I put another triangle inside. So this is my center line. I put another triangle inside, like that. So there's two triangles laying on top of each other. Chop this off here, chop that off there. So you have that. So this is like that arrow spearhead right here, like that. Chop that off there. Then, of course, my circle would go here and there because those are the shoulders for the woman. Women don't have big shoulders. Arm here. Or cylinder here, cylinder there, oval. Then I will have my cylinder here, cylinder here, cylinder here circle cylinder and what i would do i would round that out round it off put your head and then your neck and then the breast is just an, as a heart it's just an upside down heart we're not going to get into that part of it so once you get this then you can say okay that's too wide i'll make the triangle a little skinnier and maybe this part a little wider for somebody who, who have big hips but this circle cylinder again and then your oval and remember your feet are just two triangles pulled apart if you have somebody standing together at attention then you just do a little piece like that piece like that representing the little toe part come up and if you're being dressed if you're dressing them again which probably will there you have it so that's the female two triangles and then i'll just round it out round it off I'm not going to worry about the breast today. So I'm rounding it off like this. Okay, that was a little too wide for me, so I'll just do that. And then you have your female. And let's put some shorts on her, just because it's YouTube, and YouTube can demonetize you at any time, day or night. Jogging shorts. Okay, so and then a t-shirt. T-shirt on the female. Female. 
There you go. T-shirt on the female. Simple to draw once you know the shape. So let me wrap this up. Let me get into some, something that it might I feel might be important because I don't want this to be like a two-hour video. Uh, let's jump back to the rooms. Let's jump back to the rooms. So we already have this. Let me do another one of these as soon as I get another piece of paper. So since I've got this on the floor, I'll use this long piece of paper right here on the floor. This is like a, I don't know, it's not 11, it's 11 by 8, I think it is, 8, eight and a half by 11. Yeah. So, yeah, and it's much thinner too. Uh, you finally want to blur on me. So let's go back to the room and let's put some furniture in the room because I know it's going to be a minute before people want to draw um, people, but you'll get to it eventually. And before I do that, let's jump back on this because I started with this guy and I, and I left off with this guy. As I said, this is your shadow person. So when you put them all together, you have these shapes, these shapes, this, this is, as I said, this was, this was this your waist, no, your hips, I'm sorry, the upside down house, your leg, your knee, other half of the leg, and the triangle right there for feet. Now, as you, as you become better, you'll be able to shape these things a little bit more. There's your circle, and then your mitten, for your, or your oval for your hand, circle for your shoulder, cylinder, circle, cylinder, and then, of course, you can make the person either longer, shorter, taller. You can give them a big, giant water head, whatever you want to do, you know, however you want to do it. You can slim them out a little bit, a lot more. And I say make them, make them taller. But just by these shapes. And then because you know how to turn these shapes, it's instead of being straight, now, now it's going to be a cylinder. Remember keeping this part just as round as that part. This cylinder here, I want to do this way. It becomes easy once you learn the shapes. Now, taking this, and we'll just a quick side note, taking this arm and placing this arm out like in front of you, like this guy's holding a gun in front of you or something like that, is just this with more of a circle. Now, let me show you real quick with this. So this is my cylinder. Cylinder straight down, okay? So this is a cylinder straight down like this. Now I want to raise this cylinder up like that. So pretend this is an arm. So what I want to do is I want to start, and of course it's going to get shorter. This is my ground. This is where the cylinder sits. So this one's going to be like this. And you're going to see more of that opening as it comes down. And you're going to see just as much here. Next one is going to be right about here, a little more opening. So each one is going to get rounder and shorter, keeping just as much round as is here. This one's going to go about right here. So it's going to go back. And let's just put this one, let's just say almost all the way down. So you're going to see this bottom. And that's how you would do, if you were going to do somebody's leg or arm, it just, it goes down and just as much roundness as you have here, you have to have it here. No cutting off flat. So if I did somebody, this is a person, this is that, and he's aiming a gun at me. Let's just say, here's a gun. Usually what I'll do is I'll draw the hand first. And the hand could be a square for now till you get into it. And here's the gun. He's aiming this gun. So you have two cylinders on the arm. So when you take one, I have another one of these somewhere. Here it is. Hold on one second while I get it. And I'll give you an example of what I'm about to do. So you have these two. Let's do it this way. You have these two. Let's just say this is the arm. This is the elbow here. Now, when you raise your arm up and point it at someone, you're going to let's say this is the fist right here. The fist is going to be right here. This is the fist on here. 
when you raise that up and point it at someone, what's going to happen is one of these is going to disappear. The back one is going to disappear and you see the front. And it's going to do the same thing here, except you're going to lose some of that back one. Okay? So, if this person was aiming this gun at me, here's his thumb, here's his fingers. He's aiming that gun at me. So, this one cylinder is going to be like this. This other cylinder is going to come like that. It's going to connect to the side. So, you see that already. So, now if I drew that whole cylinder, it's going to look like this. Just as round at the front, you're going to have room for that elbow. And this one is going to be right here. It's going to be right here. I remember, this is the elbow. And then this is the shoulder right here. And then this is the guy looking, I'm about to rob you, dude. You got those beady eyes, because most criminals have beady eyes. And as I say, here's his thumb, here's his finger, 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 and here is his Glock 38. Is there a Glock 38? I don't know. This is, it's, it's a, yeah, this is his, his Glock 38. He's from the future. So, yeah, once you get this stuff down, you'll be drawing this in no time. Promise you, promise you. So what was I going to do? Oh, the room. So let me get another piece of paper, and we'll do that room, and I'll show you more of these squares and that triangle, and then we will finish that up, and you guys can go draw, because I know you are in ready to start drawing. Again, let's draw a big room. Here's my square. Now, I'm going to put my triangle point, let's just, let's, I'm going to put it exactly in the middle. Let's just put it over to the side a little bit. There's my triangle point. Are you focused on me? It's kind of hard to see because I'm moving away from my monitor. So my monitor, let's see if I can turn it just a little bit. That might work a little better. So I'm going to do my first triangle. And remember, your triangle edges are going to come from these four squares. So... One right here, triangle right onto that point right there. You're blurring on me again. Why? Why? Too much other stuff. Let's get these other papers out the way. Maybe just trying to focus <clears throat> on something else. Thank you. Can you stay like that for a minute? I don't have one of those $2,000 cameras because I don't have that many subscribers. So subscribe, subscribe. Tell YouTube this guy is, is just awesome so he can get a $2,000 camera so it won't keep doing that. I don't know why he's doing that. So anyway, let's go to the next triangle. So you have one, two triangles, and you have your third triangle here. Your fourth triangle, one, two, three, four triangles. Off-centered triangles, but nonetheless, they are triangles. So let's put my wall further back. Point, point, straight across, point. Go up, point, go across. And if done right, they should all meet at the same. You won't have like one way up here going over here. They should all meet at the same line. <clears throat> so now I have my room again. Now let's keep that point. Let's, let's, well, let's just keep all of that. We're going to erase these later, but let's just keep this point. Let's just say I wanted to put some something in this room, something in this room. So to put something in this room, you're going to have to, this is your floor, okay? This is your floor right here. So things are going to have to sit on the floor. Let's just say I put a box here, and that box could be a dresser later. It could be a bed. It could be a computer. It could be anything here. So straight line. We're going to draw that rectangle first, and it has to go below this line. And these are just showing you boxes, rectangles. So it's going to be like this, this, this. This is my rectangle. Okay, so every point that you see has to go to this. So you're going to make these long triangles to go here. Let me show you real quick. And let me do this in blue. Pet peeve. Let's do this in blue just to show you what I'm saying. And you're going to have to use a ruler for this. this I'll just do a couple of them because you can get the gist of what's happening. This, and you may not see too much of that right here. You will see some of that. Now, long triangle going back to this rectangle. So now all I have to do is figure out how long I want this thing. Is this going to be like a, um, a small box, a long box, or whatever? So all I have to do, 
to make that is just straight up and down, same as this, and then straight back. Remember, if you have to do the L or do a T, again, letters, letters, it's so simple. We make letters every day. Except if you're Korean or Chinese, then there's different letters if you're not writing in English. Arabic, different letters. So now I have my, there could be a dresser. Here's my drawers. And the same thing, every line has to go to that point. Every line has to make that triangle to that point. But I'm just going to rush this there. And I'll do something else over here. Let's just say a bigger, taller box. So again, how why do you have to have it this is your this is your wall something can't float above the wall unless it's stuck into the wall like an electric plug so we have this going below this line out make this a little wider that's my l so that's just an l and if i have to turn it over to make another l if it's just easier for me to do a letter there you go so every point has, has to go to this every Corner. Not these back corners, unless this is see-through, unless it's glass. But if it's wood or metal, it has to go to that. And I'll do this once again. So by doing these triangles, you are way ahead in perspective from most people. Put your, put your pin on that point, put your ruler on the other point where you want it to go, and then just drag it there. So again, how long do you want this? So I'm going to make this just like this. This is off because my line is off, but that's okay. So now let's just say I erase this blue, which is not really going to erase as good as I wanted to erase. And I erase everything in the back wall. I just want to put two pieces of furniture in this room. So I erase this. Go back to my pencil. Here's my wall again. And now you know how to put something in there. If I put a frame or window in there, it's got you have to make that triangle again to that point. Top it off. It's really, really, really simple. If I'm doing, like I can say, like my ceiling lights. Uh, let's do, just do some center ceiling lights. Here, it's got to go back to the point. Well, not really. Yeah, it will. It will go back to that point. Another one back here. And they're going to follow each other. So, you know, unless you have just off, crazy off ceiling lights. And if I put a door or window on two doors, that's just two rectangles. Choose your path, Neo. Choose the red door or the blue door. So if I ink this with a crude, crude ink job, do I have a fatter pen that will make me look halfway decent? This one's dying on me. So now you know how to do room interiors. And that's why I say I love comics, because in comics, you're doing so much. You're not just drawing flowers, as I said before, or or puppies or, or kittens or something like that all day long you are drawing everything you're not only drawing those puppies and kittens you're drawing interior and exterior and you're designing clothes and and cars and trucks and roads and cities and so forth and so on furniture all kind of stuff so people look at comics like hey, a comic book artist comic book but comic book artists are probably some of the greatest artists out there they might not be able to paint or sculpt but they can create and that's the same thing. If you watch, ever watch a movie, uh, they have storyboarders that do, basically, it's just a comic book without all the words and so forth, but it gives you directions. It shows you what's happening. Because this could be a storyboard, one storyboard right here as the person, I'll do that later, comes in a room and he looks at the doors. This will be one of your camera shots for the director to use when he's doing that particular scene. And you talk about good money, storyboarders get crazy money. Pet peeve, get out of here. So here's my thing. And 
doing storyboards, you don't have to have you don't have to use as much detail as you do in comic books. You don't really have to have to use that much detail in comic books, but some artists just do that because they want to show, you know, hey, I can draw and you know, I ain't mad at you. So these little ceiling lights. Fluorescent ceiling lights. So that they have a little bit of meat to them. So this is, let's just say this is my storyboard. And here is Johnny right here. Here's Johnny. He just entered the room. Johnny has to figure out what door he wants to go through. So this would be either a close-up. This is a close-up of the back of Johnny's head. So you can either have it all black or you can just do his hair. But I'm doing it all black just because it gives you that mysterious shadow feel. And you learn this stuff from doing comics. Because drawing, visual drawing, you want to get the feeling from your drawing. You want to make it feel like it's scary, it's spooky, it's, it's, it's happy, it's, it's uh, tense. You want to, so by doing the angles of your drawing, that, um, that allows the reader to get that emotion in them. So anyway, I'm going to end this right here because uh, I know this is a long video. But, you know, when you have a lot to teach and when you have a lot to show, it takes time. And if you stayed with it right up until this point, that really means that you really wanted to learn this thing. And here's the creature right here. Because it's glass. And he's like, whoa, come through. See, this is the comic book geek in me coming out because I create, I, I see stuff and I like to create and he's got these horns because, you know, he the devil, man. And he's pushing on the glass. He's looking at him. He's like, help. I'm trapped in here. So, see, I, look, I, I got to end this because I'll just, I'll just go crazy. And that's why I like comics because creative people and people with stories to tell, that's the way to go. Oh, that's why I do comics because I'm creative. I got stories to tell. And this is a big soda machine. <laughs> and here I go. <laughs> this is Coke, baby. He's got to get him a Coke before he goes through one of those doors because it's hot. And this is where the devil's like, buy me a Coke, please. <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah, Coke. Coke, it's the real thing. It's got a bigger glass because it got your Cokes in here. Creative people, creative people. This is why people draw comics. So for real, I'm gonna end this here because I'll just, I'll just, this thing will get crazy. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Hopefully you enjoyed that. And then with those simple, simple, simple tips, you should be drawing. You should be drawing something. Check your shapes out. Learn your shapes. Where are they at? Learn your shapes. Do your shapes. Practice your shapes. People say, oh, I'm going to draw no square, circle, triangle. Now you understand how important they are and how much you would use them. Look at your everyday life. See, what is a circle? What is a triangle? In my house, out in the real world, step outside. Even a tree is a cylinder. The, the, the stalk, the whatever, the base, whatever is a cylinder. So, yeah. <sighs> like, comment, subscribe, whatever else. Set your notifications. All right, I'm out. I'm not going to say anything else. I'm out. Good drawing. Good to see you again.